Welcome to English Today. We are going to be working on our vile and repulsive description of that messy room. We're going to build on past learning, previous learning with fireball word choices instead of just rice cake words, but amazing adjective and really precise specific nouns, maybe proper nouns, add pizzazz, like some smash Oreos in the Dell computer keyboard. So fire about word choices, but also ideas. How to show versus tell the reader. We're going to be using very vivid language in our description today. A third learning target I'd like to add is we are going to teach you some hooks, some strong leads. How can you pull your reader in and engage them right away? So you're going to need a couple different tabs open. I will review them, and then I'll have your teacher pause so you may locate the different materials you need for today's lesson. Our warm-up is going to be on a Jamboard. For each crew, you have your own little jam board. So in Google Classroom, we just called it like writing jam. You'll see this little icon is circled like a little rectangle. And a jam board is just simply a big piece of, of, of white space that we can all just boom, boom, boom. I wish I was in the classroom with you and we could have our discussion and I could hear your thinking, but I can't. And so this is a place you can post and allow me to get a little sneak peek into what's going on in that big juicy brain of yours. So you'll open up the jam board for today's warm up. Secondly, continue building on our work from yesterday, we'll need that Google Drawing, the messy room Google Drawing. Also, I want to note that this might not work for every learning style. If you want to just go paper, pencil, and just jot down ideas like, this is what I'm thinking, this is what's under the bed, this is what's falling over on into the garbage can and vapors rising out of this, okay, you can use that. Or if you want to just use a Google Doc and lick list, we just need you to do some planning, just generate ideas for this strong descriptive piece, okay? But if you're using this, Go ahead and pull that up. How do I start? We're going to review some great leads. You may want to refer to this document, but I will go over it. I did share it with you. And finally, at the end of the hour, you are going to be given the opportunity to dive in and actually start writing to develop this piece. So it's just a Google Doc. It's set up with a heading on there for you. A helpful checklist is on page two, as well as the rubric, what you'll be assessed on. So again, Jamboard, copy the messy room, Google Drawing. So one, two, how do I start? And your essay. So I'll pause and I'll meet you in a second. Okay, we're gonna start with Jamboard. So you'll have that open, but first you need to know what you're gonna be responding to. And here it is. The question is, how could this writer improve? This is, this is some lazy writing. This would not earn you a high score on our piece. And although we've written a couple pieces, this is our first real assessment, our first big writing assessment, 35 points for the messy room. We're looking for one to two suggestions here. A student submitted this. The room was a mess. There's so much stuff in there, you couldn't see the floor. It smelled horrible. There were old sandwiches, some gum, wadded paper, and dirty sacks. Jimmy should clean his room. If you're coaching this writer along, if you're like, if this person was your friend, dude, you should do this. What would be some pointers you would give to this person based on the lessons we have and what you know about great writing? So in Jamboard today, Jamboard has several feature features. We're not going to use the pen, the eraser. Um, you can import a picture. We're not doing that. Shapes, those are just some of the different tools. We're going to use a sticky note. It's the fourth one down. So if, and it even says sticky note if you hover over it. Go ahead and click it. Put your last name. So I know that this is your thought and give us a couple ideas of how you think this writer could improve. If you need to change the color sticky note, you may do that. So put your idea and then boom, save, and it'll go on to our Jamboard. One sticky note. For each student, you'll be able to see your colleagues' ideas on there as well. Please don't add anything else except your sticky note. Make sure you put your name first and your idea. I will go back to the writing, post it, and as you view it, you may give your response on the Jamboard. Pause the video and allow students to submit their idea for how could this writer improve. All right, I see so many smart things. The room was a mess. That's just a lame lead, or it doesn't really strike me, right? Maybe you, maybe there's vapors wafting under the door crack as you approach the dreaded room, right? You need something to engage the reader. Stuff right here, that is such a lame, vague word. Stuff, that's lazy, right? We know we need precise nouns. What is the stuff 
do we have a backpack that's darkening in the bottom with the fabric turning from a red to a dark crimson because there's some some of the kind of like Mountain Dew or, or Gatorade oozing out the bottom of it and dripping and seeping everywhere into the carpet. Like what is in there? Um, what does this smell like? Do we have curdled milk going on in there? You know, is there old, you know, is there a bag of hockey equipment with the, this, the rancid vapors coming out of that? What do we have? What kind of sandwiches? I would suggest that instead of listing, listing is lazy, that this writer just zoom in on each thing. All right, maybe there's some gum stuck to the mirror, but what kind of gum do we have? You know, is it bright green orbit gum with the teeth marks embedded into it? And there's maybe some dark curly hair stamped to it and it's stuck to the mirror. Ugh, okay, right. What does it actually look like? Jimmy should clean his room. Eh, okay. Kind of a cop-out lead or closer. You could you could strengthen the closing with something a little bit more vivid, something with some action, maybe some exaggeration. So this piece, it needs a lot. It needs stronger word choices, more development of detail. Listing is lazy. Show me, don't tell me. And that learning target, we need to, boom, captivate our readers right away with an amazing lead. So let's take a look at what you have. Turn toward your Google Drawing where you've, you've created a host of ideas, just kind of spill them onto the page. Maybe they haven't taken sentence form yet. Maybe they don't have all the great word choices. They're just your ideas, your brainstorm, and that's where writers start. We'll finesse it, we'll put them into flowing sentences, we'll add the word choices today and in a bit. So I was thinking about this room, right? Maybe I just wanna start with a bed. What do I see in the bed, okay? It's this wrinkly, twisted waterfall pouring off the edge of the bed, the sheets, and they're trying to, the sheets are trying to slink out the door, okay? What do I see on the dresser or around the desk? Crumpled wads of lined paper littered around the desk like snowballs. Maybe there's this monster energy drink spilled on a plate and now it's become this dried sticky film that feels gritty with pencil shavings and, and fuzz. Maybe there's this trail of neon orange cheese it crumbs smashed into the rug. Maybe you have this glass on the nightstand and it's fingerprinted and it's all filmy and it contains this gray putrefied liquid cemented to the nightstand and it's got this disgusting milk ring below it okay i don't know whatever you want to put in your room so um pause the video and let's take about five more minutes to add any striking ideas that would help develop our piece and then we're going to talk about how to embellish these ideas with strong word choice i'll pause so we need about eight things in this room we don't want to just say there's some stuff in there, okay? I don't know, you got a dirty old jockstrap hanging from the ceiling fan. We need some stuff. But now let's come up with some amazing words to describe the things that are in it. So always for you all year in Google Classroom under Classwork, I will have resources for you. And these resources, I'll get out so you can see, they're under the Resources tab. And you have these amazing word choice sheets. The ones that are going to be powerful for powerful for us today are the adjectives in the sensory detail. There's also action verbs. There's physical traits, like what people look like, character traits, like are you lighthearted? Are you fun? But we want words for things. So let's click on adjectives for sensory detail. And the first page I see are words for color. So, you know, you're going into the closet. It's not just, it's not just black, but is it murky, right? Is it pitch black? That makes it sound in more interesting. Maybe there's a banana peel in the room and it's and it's has turned to this coal black and it's becoming, you know, thin and it's liquefying and it's oozing out everywhere. You know, I want to see what color. It's not just black. So those are color words. Um, as you continue down, sight words. As you walk into this room, these are some good verbs for the sight. Like you're not just looking at it, but, you know, you're gaping in horror. So that would be good. Like, oh, right. Um, or maybe you're, you're coming in on tiptoe, so you're just peeping in to see, you know, the onslaught of disaster that, that awaits. So different words for the appearance. We're probably not going to use clear or light words, but dark words. We might use words that are dim. Is it gloomy? Is it murky? Is it shadowy in this room? Dull? Dreary? There could be some sounds. You might hear a plip, plip, plip of something happening in that room. Um, as you continue down, smell is going to be is going to be money for you. Use the smell words. Obviously, not good smelling, but go to the next one, and you're going to find some words like it doesn't it doesn't just smell bad, but man, that is foul. That is that is rank, loathsome, odious, offensive, reeking, 
Those are amazing words. These are powerful words for Rattan, okay? So you get the idea. I'm not going to go through all these sheets, but I'm going to go ahead, pause, and I want you to I want you to peruse these, gather, harvest, take five to seven amazing adjectives and go ahead and apply them right to your Google Drawing. So if I'm talking about, I want to add an idea in about that banana. What is it like? What does it smell like? So I go as I go to these amazing word choices, I can talk about how it is, you know, uh, repugnant, sickening, liquefying, dark as coal, thin peel. Okay. I will pause. Add five to seven amazing word choices onto your diagram. All right. If you want to share with a partner a couple of amazing word choices you have, um, your teacher can choose to pause and have a whole group discussion if you'd like. Um, I'm going to continue on after you've done that. And there gets to be a point where we've done enough planning, we've done enough notes, and let's not worry if all these boxes are filled in. I'm not going to grade this notes and playing drawing. This is for you as a springboard. But we just got to start writing. We got to go. We got to get after it. Okay. So how do we do that? Remember that our piece, we need about eight things. So we've got, maybe you have five brainstorm. You'll come up with the others as you write. Good writers, things occur to you. You get great ideas as you're writing. It happens to me all the time. So don't feel like that whole blooming drawing needs to be perfect. It's a springboard. Let's get going. We want to put in at least two proper nouns. Again, a proper noun is like maybe you've got fruit loops, right? Sprinkled all over the all over the tabletop. Maybe you have some kind of like sporting goods equipment in the, in the in the corner with noxious vapors rising from, you know, the, the sweaty shoulder pads from football. Whatever you have, you know, smash Doritos in your pillowcase, you go for it. We need the positive. Again, that is like my room, a dark abyss, comma, holds my homework for ransom. Or my room, a toxic wasteland is a hoarder's paradise. You'll come up with it. We also have many delicious adjectives and word choices that you've selected, similes, exaggerations, etc. You'll add those as you write. So let's go. What are we going to put into this thing? So here are some, some sample leads. I have it on a slide. I also shared it with you. How do I start? I like to start with action. Grip the reader right away. Something happens. Sound works like that. The author of Bed had used that. Shuffle schlump, shuffle schlump. Great technique. Whoosh. The contents of my closet came spewing onto my floor like a tidal wave. I stood stunned and gaped at the horror. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You continue on. You could start with dialogue. What is somebody in your household or friend saying as they approach your room? What is that foul smell? My mother muttered as she passed my bedroom door. Or, dude, your room is trash, gasped my friend as he stared in horror. Description works too if you just want to start right away describing something that's in there. Orange sticky slime oozed grotesquely from the heat vents while a thick swarm of flies hovered over my wastebasket. Bzzz. Inner thought, that will add a little voice and feeling to your piece. Like you could be, it could be your room. So you could write from first person if you wish. You could make up a character, little Jimmy's room. Dang it, company's coming tonight, remember Jimmy in a panic as he approached his room. Finally, another technique is tension. If you value your life, do not go near my bedroom. Or, my room is so disastrous it should be roped off with yellow caution tape for the safety of others. Okay. So at this time, we're going to have teachers pause, and I want you to review these different options, and on your document, you just need to get going with something. What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with action? Do you want to do description? If you want to start with dialogue, throw in some quotation marks and have somebody start talking. What are they saying? Don't worry about the title yet. I have a writer's secret or a great trick for producing a catchy title. That'll come later. But I want you to take five, ten minutes and produce a striking lead. Okay? Teachers, you may pause the video and then we'll share out. And then I'll give some tips on how to look at our rubric. And the rest of the time is for writing. All right. Tackle those leads. Did you come up with a striking lead? This is one of my favorite things to do in classes when people share out. So if you didn't, you'll get there. But five points is for the lead. The rubric is directly below where you'll write. You need about eight supporting details in this piece. So lengthwise, most kids, when they do a good job, somewhere between a half a page and a page to do 
uh, quality description. We're not, I'm not going to tell you how many sentences you have to have, but our real learning target is don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. Don't tell me the room is messy. Show me what's in there. Your writing is vivid. It paints a picture. I feel like I'm there. We want to use a couple types of figurative language. So a simile, you know, is it you know, look like a bomb had gone off, right? You could use um, personification, right? The tangled, wrinkled sheets were a waterfall trying to slink away from the horrors, right? You give it human qualities. You work with figurative language a lot in sixth grade, put into, even if it's sound, like drip, 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 that counts, it's lively. The appositive, we'll hammer this again tomorrow. The appositive, a noun, like my cat, the furry tank, slept amid the tangle of covers on my stained mattress well gross okay um a noun and another noun my room a toxic wasteland was the nemesis for my entire household something okay so a noun and another noun phrase what are you going to call your room we've worked hard with a word choice these last weeks put in vivid word choices but then drop in a couple of proper nouns are they oreos are they doritos what's going on is it is it squished orbit gum and then you'll close it off. So here are here are the goodies, the rubric, the checklist for you, and the rest of the time is for you to write. You will also get a writing session tomorrow. All right. I can't wait to see what you have. I'll be opening up documents and giving you some comments and feedback as you work as well. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck, sailors.